Welcome, everybody. Episode 14 coming Hello. off of our Hot Ones uh, belly blow up. Episode 14 talks. For I just crap myself listening to that. Yeah. And y'all both had <laughs> bad experiences afterwards. Mine wasn't that bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, mine, mine hit about eight hours after we got done. <laughs> and, it, and it was one of those where it's like, oh, no, <laughs> I have to get somewhere and quick. So, you know, you know how... Um, you put Ben Gay on your private parts, and there's just like this serious burn. Yes. Okay, so the first poo out of like four was like a standard. All right, I ate something hot at Buffalo Wild Wings. Poo, right? It wasn't that bad. The second one that hit me with Dragon Force through fire and flames. It was. It was. Oh, it was coming, baby, and. The worst part about it, though, is I felt like I was done, right? I stood up, and my butt cheeks clapped together from the toilet. And when they did, I guess there was residue on each cheek, so when it, cl it closed, it got hot again. I'm like, I thought I was done. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> That's great. Never, never stand up. Never stand up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This week on Lineup For You, speaking of acidic shits, we're going to discuss when is the appropriate time to fart. We're going to revisit one of our what-if questions from that and see if Steven has come up with 10 songs that he can listen to for the rest of his life. And me and Cody will give our five movies. We're going to talk about the first car accident we were ever in. We're also going to go uh, to the comments and discuss our favorite cartoons growing up. But first, as usual, we got Burns My Biscuits. Cody, what's heating you up this week? All right. We've talked, I've actually had this one before, but it happened to me again today, so we're going to talk about it again. The turning lane in the middle of the road is a turning lane. It is not a merging lane <laughs> today i'm today i'm trying to get home and this car pulls out of jacks and gets in the turning lane and just drives like 50 yards and finally just stops and is trying to get in <laughs> and i mean we're all just zooming by i'm like up yours buddy that is not a merging lane well, especially that me off so freaking bad. Well, I mean, especially if you're on a path where there's not even like a traffic light close by or a stop sign, like there's no reason for you to slow down. Why would you be the one to impede traffic? I mean, you're right. There's no reason for you to slow down. Nobody should have slowed down for him. You wait for a break in the traffic and then you go. Super rude. Super rude. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'll never be as mad as I was the day, you know, which I've talked about this before, though where I was trying to get home and this guy was coming toward me in the turning lane, trying to merge. And I'm in the turn lane, trying to go home, trying to turn into my road. And we're just sitting there staring at each other. Stop <laughs> in the lane. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm not to my road yet. So I can't turn left. And he's sitting there with his blinker on trying to get into five o'clock traffic. I'm just giving it. I'm just giving him the business from my car. I'm just yeah, well, screaming at him. Cue the gold member. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> over giving these, you know. <laughs> I'm hot. Yeah. Anyway, that burns my biscuits. Absolutely. I will, I will have that one every time that happens to me. That makes me so furious. You're not alone in that. Well, I have a unique one. My burns my biscuits is self-created. So I have this wonderful acoustic guitar that my brother-in-law got me. And I want to play guitar. I, I would love to play guitar. But what's burning my biscuits right now is my lack of motivation, right? So, I, I mean, I could play, you know, a, a few things here and there, you know, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, woo! That was like hot cross buns on the recorder, right? Like, 
when everybody got a recorder in middle school, it was like, oh, I can play Hot Cross Buns. It was the fire. You know, it's it's great that I can play one thing, but I've, I've hit a wall and my motivation isn't pushing me to continue and do better. So I can, I can play a few notes. I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but I, I want to do more than just let it sit in the corner and look pretty and have people be like, oh, you play. And I'm like, <laughs> no. So I, I, it's it's really burns my biscuits that I don't have the push right now, the drive to play this guitar. But, you know, I, I, I recommend to anybody, you know, if you have something that you've been wanting to do, get up and do it. Like Shia LaBeouf did. Just do it. Do it. Hopefully that was your motivation for the day. Hey, I feel you, man. This one back here, don't yeah, any of y'all that watch the video podcast, like this thing right here, I I can't play that shit. Uh, but look, I do play bass, and I, I, I feel what you mean, man. Like, I see, I feel bad even saying I play bass. Right now, I don't play bass. I want to get back into playing bass. I was in two different original bands, uh, and then I did fill-in jobs for about six months in several cover bands. And I loved playing bass. Loved playing bass. Loved being on stage, man. I'm a showman. I like to show out. I will put on for the camera. I will put on for the audience. But here lately, like, I don't... My my want to play bass is not overcome by my want to do any do other stuff. I want yeah. to play bass. I want to get my chops back up. Me and Cody have discussed playing together. I want to go play music with Cody, and I guess that's what it's going to take. I'm going to have to drive my lazy ass up to where he lives and just go play with him. What? But like, if I'm sitting at home at night and I'm like, I could practice bass... With no amp right now, just doom, doom, like barely being able to hear it, or I could play Call of Duty and browse YouTube. Well, I'm going to play. I mean, Call of Duty doesn't sound bad, but on the flip side, you know, we could be going Paul Rudd and I love you, man, and we could be slapping the beast, man. You know, I feel that like if, if, if I put a little bit of drive towards it, and Alan, you finally found that step up, like, hey, let's go play a little bit, that we could be playing Rush songs in a garage somewhere, you know? Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's. Cody. <laughs> let's let's. God, Rush is terrible. Right, right. <laughs> look, you may think Rush is terrible, but I promise you, if I got to the point where I could bust out X X Y Z, what whatever the fuck that song is, like you would, you would. Well, because okay. that song uh, is. I'm not saying they're not good musicians. I just. Hey. Oh, fine. You know what? That's but fine. If I, but if I could pull off that, they're all playing Guns and Roses anyhow. Yeah, fuck y'all. <laughs> well, I tell you this. Yeah. I tell you this. It wouldn't yeah. take. It wouldn't take much effort because they're all talentless <laughs> hacks in that band. We can get famous doing their covers of covers. There's already people that do that. <laughs> no, I I feel you, Stephen. Um, Ever since, since I got done with school, I, I had so many things I was wanting to work on. And I still will. I mean, I've only been out of school for a month, but um, I was really wanting to get back to playing my guitar all the time. I want to get back to get back out playing gigs, but I'm not going to go out till I'm ready. And I know I'm not ready. Yeah. And I got to put in the work and I just I hadn't done it yet. I'm sitting here, I'm like Alan. I'm sitting here, I'm like, looking at my guitar. I'm like, well, I can play guitar for three hours till my fingers hurt so bad I got to quit. Or I could play Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Alan will join me in a little while. <laughs> so I will always okay. join you. Hey, you want to play oh, after yeah. we get done? <laughs> kind of, I'm, I'm in the same spot. But hey, Steven, you got you to gotta fight through it, dude. We've all been there. Um I've been playing guitar for a long time. I'll tell you what's really going to help you is find a song that you want to learn how to play and just learn it. House of the Rising Sun. That one is honestly, that one's you honestly. That is an easy picking pattern. It's you okay, can so What I need is somebody to guide me through it. Okay. I next. will tell you the, chord, the, the chords you need to learn and you can do it. It's Look. so easy. Next, it's really easy to play. Next time we all, I'm ready already. Next time we all get together, 
in New Orleans. In the same room, we'll go to Cody's house and we'll all play. We'll all play music together. Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, and see, Stephen, when you when you learn that one song, then you'll the next time you learn a song, the next song you try, it may have the same chords, and you're like, oh, I already know those chords. And you learn that song like that. So yeah. it, it all just, builds on each other. And that's the best way. If you just try to do lessons and scales and stuff, you're gonna you'll burn yourself out. Yeah, you I did. And that's exactly what happened. Songs. Yeah. I mean, that's my burnt my biscuits. I'm done venting about it, but I, I need to push myself and it really burns my biscuits that I you know, it, it's easy, you know, and I'm sure everybody can agree it's easy to look at a friend and be like, Man, you can do it. You can do it. But you, telling yourself to go do it. It's frustrating as piss because you can't ever do it and convince yourself, go. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Moving on to our next topic tonight. We're going to go ahead because we meant to do this last week. We love our commenters. We love people who comment on our videos and leave comments. And Renegade Gamer was at it again, brought up a good one. I believe when this one brought up, we were on the topic of nostalgia again. And uh, Renegade Gamer wants to know what our favorite cartoons were uh, growing up. But if you moved a little bit into your teenage years, I will accept that. I've done that as well. I've got about four cartoons that I distinctly remember loving as a kid. And then stuff I discovered a little bit later. Who wants to go first? What y'all got lined up? I can go. Go ahead, uh, Steve. So, my youngest years, the, the cartoon that really hit me first, that was like, I got to sit down and watch this every day, was Dexter's Lab. <laughs> Dexter's Lab was freaking incredible. Like, this little boy genius and his, his ridiculous sister, Dee Dee, absolutely loved that show. And it's shown on HBO Max, if you want to go check it out. Dexter's Laboratory is, he says laboratory in the show, but every know everybody knows his laboratory. But he's he's a genius, so he says it how he wants. Yeah, I'll um, say that that is a great show. I actually, what? it's what? actually for me. Uh, I know I've got what about five years on y'all. It was a little bit after my time on that type of show. I didn't. I never really got into that one. I, I was aware of it. I had other friends who watched it. I never really got into that one a lot. Did it's, not. It's, to me, it was very enjoyable because the, there was all he, you know, so he was an e evil, you know, he was a not an evil. He was a genius kid and he had an evil nemesis called Mandark and he was a genius, too. And they were both kids and they went back and forth, creating their things and fighting each other and always competing and stuff. So that was great. Love that show. Um, of course, I also have to go with uh, Johnny Bravo. Used to love Johnny Bravo, the arrogant, just. Hey there, put him on. <laughs> you know, that that guy was freaking <laughs> awesome. He he he's the equivalent to today's quagmire. He didn't know what no meant. He he thought, I'm gonna hit on you, baby. Come on over here. So I mean he was just Johnny Bravo was awesome. And then you growing up got the Johnny Bravo hairdo going. Uh, yeah. after, since you cut I mean, it and it kind of it yeah, kind of goes by the little stand up yeah, table. That's you, it, baby. You gotta get you some uh, blacked out from right now. It's probably a lot of muscle, and I don't look at myself in the mirror and think about, man, I'm pretty. Huh. <laughs> yeah, you do. I do. <laughs> oh, oh my! <laughs> but uh, my last show that um that really stuck out, favorite favorite show wise, it's I, I don't know if you could even count it because I don't anime and cartoon, uh, but um, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Now, of course, going forward, you know, I'm older now, so they got Dragon Ball GT and Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super and all the other stuff. But when I was a kid, Dragon Ball, just Dragon Ball, was the show. Uh, martial arts, fighting, and all that other stuff. Loved it. It was fantastic. Man, all three of yours were just after my time for the types of cartoons they were. I was all into, I jumped from like little kids' cartoons Oh, Rocket Power. Sorry. Yeah. That's my last one. Rocket Power was boss. See, didn't watch that one either. I, I went from like really little kid cartoons to like the the preteen like live 
<coughs> excuse me, live action shows like Salute Your Shorts, all that, uh, Pete and Pete, and watching stuff like that. And oh. then I got back into oh. cartoons. Uh, so that being said, my top four cartoons from my childhood, and you got to remember, mine was a little bit earlier. We were still hitting the tail end of the 80s. Uh, was Charlie Brown. DuckTales. Oh, yes. Uh, in the same line as DuckTales, we had Darkwing Duck. Yes. Then we had Doug from, from Nickelodeon. Uh, yeah, Patty Mayonnaise was his girl, and Skeeter was his boy. <laughs> and and I have to keep it old school with my original, my four originals, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The, yeah. I, that was a solid one. And then as I got older, this was teenage years, you know, 15, 16, 17, uh, I got back into cartoons, and the two go-tos were always Daria and Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> but, oh, my God! <laughs> but then, then we did still have a new kid show that just hit me the right way. And anybody that didn't like Ed, Ed, and Eddie, you're wrong. That's an excellent, excellent cartoon. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Uh, I used to love Tom and Jerry. We watched that. Tom and Jerry time. was good. And uh, Rugrats. Yeah. I, I, I made sure that I was in front of the TV at 6 o'clock or whenever that show came on every single night. I did not miss it. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Rugrats either. Gosh, that was such a good show. Um, Spider-Man. When it was when okay. when the Saturday morning cartoons was on. Was that the uh, original The Amazing Spider Man? I can't, I can't recall. That's why I, I I almost didn't bring this one up just because there've been so many kind ca- so right. many ones. And I can't remember what they called this one. Uh what was it about? on Disney Plus and I still can't remember. What is it what was it about? Spider Man. Spider Man. Oh, the Amazing Spider! Oh, I, was, I thought you were talking about another one. You just couldn't. You forgot the name of it. Um, uh, it, it was the one with the music where it goes, uh, "Spider Man, Spider Man, <laughs> radioactive Spider Man." <laughs> like a guitar solo comes in. <laughs> I don't know. It came on right after X Men. So, X Men was great too. I used to be a big yeah. X Men fan. We used to watch all the Marvel cartoons. Uh, Gargoyles. Loved yeah. that was a great show. Um, you know, Stephen, you talked about Johnny Bravo and Dexter's Lab. So that whole that whole deal, like it was like Cartoon Cartoon Network. Yeah, but they called it something. They called that programming something. Um, well, I know they have Toonami, but that's like the night show. The more yeah, I can't remember what they called it. Meanwhile, there's. So Johnny Bravo and Dexter's Lab came out of that. You also had the Powderpuff Girls. No, I did. I did watch Powderpuff Girls. That was funny. Oh, I did too. <laughs> they were just funny. Um, oh, what's that? Uh, what's the what's the one with the chicken? I mean, not the chicken, but the the cowardly the cowardly dog. Courage. Uh, Courage. Courage. The cowardly <laughs> dog. That came out of that that bunch. Uh, and. Um, Let's see what else came out of there. Just some great, I mean, that whole run was, there was some great, great you know, cartoons. For me, and this is just me, for me, you know, um, Nickelodeon had your your Rocco's Modern Life. Cat Dog. And, uh, your Cat Dog and Wild Thornberries. Wild Thornberries was, was good. I liked Rocket that. Rocket Power. For me, outside of Rocket Power and Wild Thornberries, Cartoon Network was blowing Nickelodeon out of the water with their cartoons. Like everything that came out from from Cartoon Network just wiped the floor with Nickelodeon, in my opinion. So did y'all watch Space Ghost Coast to Coast? I did watch uh, Space Ghost. Space Ghost was great. There. That's that was a good that was a good show. <laughs> um I also remember watching Arthur. Oh that uh that hamster? Yeah he was an anteater. Oh yeah, yeah that no, was... no, 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 no. I'm talking about the. Uh... What was he? I'm not sure what he was, but he was. He had a. Uh... He had the had big a long nose. DW. 
Yeah, he wasn't an anteater, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know, I, That's I, like the same time frame as the Magic School Bus, right? Yes. Yeah, and you had that. You had uh, um, Little Bear. I remember watching that. <laughs> Goo! <laughs> what? You didn't watch Little Bear? I was ah, that was a good show. You know what? When I was growing up, uh, my my family really liked to um, record, like on a VHS, they would record just Saturdays and Saturdays of cartoons. So growing up, I got to watch a lot of the older stuff before my time, like Gummy Bears. And well, not really before my time, but it was kind of, I think it was kind of phasing out as I was getting into watching cartoons. So you had Gummy Bears and Fraggle Rock. And I, I liked he, Fraggle Rock. That's not it's not a cartoon, but Fraggle Rock was the shit. I loved Fraggle. Fraggle Rock was great. It was a cartoon. Or Fraggle it was Rock. Animated. It was not. The one I'm talking about is. So yours is later. I watched the original Jim Henson's Muppets Fraggle Rock. Maybe it was Muppet. I thought it was uh, animated though. No, that was all. That Ooh, was all. Go back and watch it. That was all Muppets. <laughs> I think Steven turned into a fish. <laughs> um, did y'all watch uh, Heathcliff? I did not. But I, I did. watched a little bit of it. Oh, gosh, that was good. But I just remembered one big one that we're all forgetting. Did either of y'all not watch Animaniacs? Yes, loved oh, Animaniacs. Oh, Inky in the Brain. Tiny Toons. <laughs> Tiny Toons. Yeah. I love it's Tiny Toons. Good. Yeah, I could go back and still watch a lot of those cartoons. <clears throat> that and was... then you had the when the Disney Channel came out, uh, you started getting like Timon and Pumbaa. I watched that show. Yeah, the the spinoff cartoons uh, from other movies. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There's a lot of good cartoons. I think the Little Mermaid even had a a show too. If I remember right. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, man. I love cartoons. Look, I got a question just since y'all brought it up real quick. Side sidebar real quick. And I'm going to try not to blindside y'all with this, but do you think when Ariel got her legs she she knew she knew what her vagina was? I mean, you got to think this is a girl that was using a fork as a comb and all of a sudden she's got a vagina. Do you think she was just trying to hide stuff in there and use it as storage space? <laughs> So instead of a prison wallet, it's her sea wallet? Exactly. <laughs> like, where did my sea wallet go? Oh, there it is. I got my own personal clam. <laughs> is this an instrument? Maybe I can start clam jamming. There's even a pearl in there. <laughs> Damn it, Alan. How can you, you can't do that to us. Not our precious Disney. Right? Yeah. Uh, she was a different cartoon. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. We done we, we done talking about cartoons. We good? <laughs> yeah. Good topic. Good All topic. right. So on our Hot Ones episode, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's definitely worth the watch. We all sat down and as previously promised we did all 10 wings from season 13 of Hot Ones. And I think we all agree one through six actually tasted pretty good. I know some people weren't partial to the curry flavored one, but I kept that bottle. Uh, we're, that, that one's going in the regular rotation for me. Uh, looking at our view counts and our analytics, I think all of our regular viewers have already watched the episode uh, we would absolutely love it if you shared that video for us. Get that spread out there. It's an excellent video. It's doing very well for us. Go ahead and share that video if you can. I know we went a little... Uh, <laughs> we may have gone a little overboard on the NSFW on that episode, so we understand. But if you can share that video, please share it. Uh, it's a great video. It's performing well, and we appreciate everybody who's watched it. That being said, one of our questions was, would you rather only watch five movies for the rest of your life and listen to all of the music you want to, or only listen to ten songs for the rest of your life and be able to watch all the movies you want? 
as expected, me and Cody both chose to listen to all the music we want and only watch five movies. And Steven, who usually knows absolutely nothing about music, says <laughs> that he would rather listen to 10 songs for the rest of his life, which makes sense. But I'm curious to see what he came up with. But we'll go ahead and get me out of the way. We'll quit making Steven talk first uh, the whole episode. And the five movies I came up with that I feel I could probably watch for the rest of my life if I had to take this deal. Number one would be Dazed and Confused. So many great actors. I mean, got their start, blew up. Some of them you don't even realize were in that movie because they played smaller roles. Did y'all know uh, Mila Jovovich is in that movie? Y'all realize that? (laughs) So... Uh, she's in that movie too. It's a great movie. Uh, second one goes right in line with that one. Same style of movie. It's Empire Records. If y'all haven't seen Empire Records, I highly recommend watching it. It's absolutely hilarious. It's the day in the life of these kids who work at a record store. And they just find out as they get to work that day that they their boss has sold out to a mega corporation and they're going to turn it into like a Suncoast video that's going to be totally corporate. It's going to go from an independently owned record store to one of these corporate like Blockbuster Music, Suncoast Music, and something like that. And they try to uh, throw a concert at the end of the night to damn the man, save the empire, and... It's a great movie. Number three, we got to go classic teenage comedy. We're going with American Pie. I uh, the the original American Pie one. If I can, if I if I only, if I only get five movies to watch for the rest of my life, one of them is going to contain Jason Biggs humping an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> my fourth movie is probably. We've already discussed that I have an embarrassingly uh, need to watch rom-coms and teen rom-coms. So that being said, we're going to go with my favorite. And in the number four spot, we're going with 10 Things I Hate About You. Excellent movie. Love that movie. And number five, we got to have a holiday movie in there. So we're going with National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. (laughs) What movies what movies you got, Cody? All right. So I went with my probably one of my this probably top three movies ever for me. It was uh the original True Grit with John Wayne. I can't go the rest of my life without seeing that movie. So that's gotta be in there. The Wolf of Wall Street. Mm. In there. Gotta have that one. Excellent. That's gonna that's gonna cover my the sex appeal, the gambling, the drugs. All <laughs> co- that all will be covered in that one movie. <laughs> um, I love my war movies, so gotta have a couple of those. I'm gonna go with the Patriot. Okay. But, uh, Excellent. Love love that movie. This one was tough. I couldn't decide if I wanted to go with Vietnam or World War Two. I decided to go with World War II and go on Staving Private Ryan. Oh, yeah. That whole, that's a whole that's yeah. a movie. It's a very <laughs> good movie. Like that one. Yes. And then for my fifth one, I was going to go One Direction, and then I remembered that I got to have a Disney movie in there. What am I doing? <laughs> so then I had to pick one Disney movie. You know how hard that is? <laughs> that's why I didn't choose movies. <laughs> You so choose? I'm going the Little Mermaid because fitting uh, because of Ariel. <laughs> her, her, her sea wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so, question: If you would have gone with Vietnam, would, would your movie have been We Were Soldiers? Yes. Knew it. That All is right. a false movie, but you did get the Mel Gibson one in with the Patriot. So that yeah. Worked. I gotta see him hack that guy up in the, out there in the ditch with the with his. Oh man, he went to out. God, he's that, that is so fun. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is my five movies. That is Cody's five movies, and now Stephen would like to present his ten songs and his thirty-eight honorable mentions. 
God, get out of here. <laughs> I only got like five. But anyways, so but that's it. For, for the record, that's why I didn't choose movies. Because like Endgame would probably be one of my movies. But I can't watch Endgame without Infinity War. I can't watch Infinity War without Iron Man. I can't watch Iron Man without, you know, it, it all intertwines. And all the Hobbits. There's six Hobbits. All the Harry Potters. You got to watch all the freaking Harry Potters. So it, five movies. I couldn't watch any of those without that so i ended up choosing music and i'm gonna gonna go ahead and list my honorable mentions first my honorable mentions are don't worry be happy i love that song (laughs) the 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 vibe for it is great um ain't no rest for the wicked cage the elephant good good song i've met Uh, them together by sunny and Cher. (laughs) i'm sorry not by sunny and Cher, by the turtles i knew that one i don't know why i said that um, remember the name by Fort Minor, and uh, a song from a Disney movie, a Goofy movie, "Eye to Eye" by Powerline. <laughs> oh, I love that song. Is that the one from the uh, main con- main concert? If we listen to each other, is that- no, it's yeah. the one at the um the con the little mini gig that he did at school. Okay, okay, gotcha. No, that's that's a different one. Yeah, there's "Eye to Eye," and then there's another one. "Eye to Eye" is the one. Out of eyes, the end of the movie. Okay, what's the one at the end of the movie then? That one. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I knew it was in there. Um, so now that you have my honorable mentions. Stand out is the one in, in school. Stand out, know. yes. Sorry, go ahead. Are no, you good? Um, so I have 10 songs that I would probably just put on repeat one the rest of my life. Um, Hurricane, Hurricane by Band of Heathens. That uh, kind of, is kind of a little bit of um, a Louisiana Pride song. I love that song. What's that look for? What's that look for? <laughs> I thought you was going rocky like a hurricane. I was like, <laughs> yes, it's a good song. <laughs> da-da, 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 da-da. No. Um, the, there's a uh, acapella group called Straight No Chaser, and then they mesh the song I'm Yours by Bruno Mars and then um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow together. So it's called I'm Yours Somewhere Over the Rainbow for Straight No Chaser. The Drifters Under the Boardwalk. It's a good song. Um, And, you know, one thing that made this tougher than it could have been is that, you know, there are specific song titles I'd like to listen to, but I can't listen to every person who sings that song title. For example, Disturbed sing, does a remake of Sound of Silence from Simon and Garfunkel. They're both really hard to choose between, but I chose the um, Disturbed version. Miranda Lambert, Kerosene. Three Doors Down, Kryptonite. Wanted, Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train. Here's, here's my boy band. I had a boy band in there. One Direction, their song Drag Me Down. And then um, my last one is Can Help Falling in Love with You. Um, not the Elvis Presley version, but the Haley Reinhardt version. Um, uh, I had to have, of course, my my wedding song in there. I love that song to death. That's why we chose it. But um, that one right there, I, I like the female voice over. But they're, that's another one. They're both phenomenal when you listen to them. But the, the female voice just hits a certain tone, and it, it sounds better to me. So the Haley Reinhardt version of I can't help falling in love by with you by Elvis Presley. Now, my tip. now I'll give you this. At least you hit every major genre except rap. You got your rock, you got your country, you got your pop, you got your oldies. I mean, so I mean, you're well covered, but you only get I, one I, song of each. I mean, yeah, I didn't do rap or I guess heavy metal, but I mean, with the rock, I, I'm kind of maybe uh, pushing in the direction with Ozzy. I, I, I'll, I'll give it to you with Ozzy. <laughs> Ozzy, I mean, ain't you can't tell anybody uh, Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne wasn't heavy metal. They're the godfathers of heavy metal. I mean, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, everything but rap. And you know what? Honestly, I think I could live without rap. So there are some songs I like, but for the most part, if if we wipe rap off the face of the planet, planet could probably be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did my true opinion just come out there? <laughs> All right, everybody. Once again, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you check out our Hot Ones episode. We had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, We have discussed some other things we're going to do in that same vein next, and there's a rumor that uh, 
in the next couple of months, we might be taking on the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings Blazing Wing Challenge. See if we can down 12 uh, Bl- Buffalo Wild Wings Blazing Wings in six minutes. So we'll be dealing with heat and speed. Uh, that's probably going to be our next challenge. We're looking forward to it. We're glad everybody has liked that video. It, like I said, it's on pace to be our best performing video. Thank you so much for everybody who watched that video. It means a lot to us. Uh, moving uh, on. Hang on, real quick. Yes, real quick. go ahead. Stephen, do yourself a favor and listen to New Orleans Ladies by LaRoe, if you haven't already. I'll put it on the list. Yeah, because I, I don't think it, that's the first I've ever even heard. Know, you been, you, uh, you liking all that stuff, you're going to love that song. It's a good song. You might put that in your list. All right. I had it I to figure out who sung it. I couldn't remember. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Moving on to the next topic of the night. We want to know. I can't remember which one of y'all brought this up, but uh, first time we were ever in a car accident or caused a car accident. First accident. Let's hear about it. Who? Which one of y'all brought this one up? I can't remember. I, it could have been me. Um, cause I had a pretty okay. wild experience. I, I don't know, but I, I had a pretty wild experience. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was me. So I, I, I can tell you about it. It was, uh, yeah, this, this is probably what sums up a teenager. So, um, I didn't have my own car yet. I was borrowing my mom's MPV minivan. Whoa. Um, <laughs> AKA at that age, it was the shag wagon because you could take out the middle seat. Anyways, um, so I, it was a Wednesday night and I, I will probably be, you know, if, if, if there are people out there watching this that love me and think that I'm just adorable, this right here, I am even ashamed of. So I asked to borrow my mom's MPV so I can go to church. And uh, do uh, they had you know an adult or teen gathering every Wednesday night and whatnot for church? So uh, I took the MPV and uh, I went to go see a girl. <laughs> Nothing to do with church. I completely <laughs> lied to my family about going to church. Didn't happen. So this, and that's what made it even worse, right? So I go see this girl. I spend an hour with her and whatnot. And uh, I think we had just started dating. We've been together for like a month. So we were still, you know, young and all, new and all this other stuff. So I went to go see her and I was on my way home and it started raining. I hydroplaned into a back of a vehicle. Mm. Ouch. On a place that's across town, nowhere close to church. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there was no like, no, uh, church is over there. How in the world did you get here? No, yeah. So I was caught. That accident gave me away. The Lord struck me down. He said, look, you don't lie about coming to see me and go see some girl. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, he hit me hard with that that uh, realization. And I, it, I <laughs> uh, me and that girl broke up like a week later. But uh, she's like, hey, it's probably the minivan. She wasn't fond of it, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> my first accident was a train wreck because I lied. Said I was going to church, ended up going to see a girl, and then hydroplane in the back of a car across town. So uh, my dad shows up and he has this look on his face like, I can't fucking believe you. <laughs> my mom's like, Are you okay? <laughs> she didn't even think about it. But my dad was like, Yo, I'm not stupid. <laughs> <sighs> My my story is actually very similar to yours. Uh, I was uh, I number one. I didn't get my license till I was seventeen. I had my permit, but I didn't get my license till I was seventeen. Didn't have a car. Didn't care. Uh, my I don't count this first part as an accident because it did not include another vehicle. But uh, the original car I was driving, I like I was literally car stupid, one hundred and ten percent. Did not pay attention to the needs of my car. Didn't do like anything. Didn't check oil. Long story short, on this part, my car. I was coming home uh, one day, 
and my car overheated. Didn't you? I'm too stupid to even realize it was in the process of overheating. I kept driving it. All of a sudden, it starts jumping. I look out the back window. I'm just billowing smoke. Get out, lift the hood. My car's on fire. Car's total. So, next day, or two days later, I believe it was something like that. I have to go to school. I mean, where's this still school year? Uh, so, my mom lets me take the family minivan <laughs> to, uh, to go to school. And I go and I pick up what was my girlfriend at the time. And we swing by and pick up her best friend. Uh, and then we decide, you know what? We don't want to go to school. <laughs> We're going to go see some friends in Hueytown. <laughs> uh, keep it, keep in mind, I lived in midfield and we're going to Hueytown. So we don't even get to where we're going. I'm being distracted. I've got my girlfriend at the time in the passenger seat. We've got her best friend not buckled up, sitting in the middle of the first row of passenger seats in the minivan, you know, up on her knees, you know, leaning in, uh, talking to me and her. It's one of those things. I turned my head for a second, talking to them. Smack! I totally rear-ended this big, giant truck in front of me. Uh, didn't hardly do any damage to the truck. <laughs> from what I remember, no damage to the truck. The van's totaled. The girl that was my ex girlfriend's uh, best friend, who was not wearing a seatbelt, did a complete flip into the uh, console of the van. So she's upside down, like on her back in between the two front seats, feet like straight up in the air. Uh, me and my ex, uh, current at the time, y'all know what I'm saying both sitting there can't breathe because the airbags have exploded and they've got all that like dust and all in there. So that was my first thing. So number one, I have to uh, call my mom and tell her that the, uh, the van's been totaled and she, what, what, what do you think her first question was? Well, where are you? <laughs> uh, not in midfield, <laughs> not in school. <laughs> Uh, so the worst part about all this you would think that these three kids were just in an accident they need to go home right <laughs> no <laughs> they they put us in the back of a cop car <laughs> and took us to school <laughs> they said y'all are okay don't need an ambulance Y'all good? Okay, get in the cop car. And they took us to... They drove us to drove us all the way from, like, middle of Hueytown to Midfield High School, pulled up at the front door, and let us all get out <laughs> of a police car. <laughs> so let, let me just put this further in perspective for you really quick. I was going through a heavy, heavy, heavy hot topic goth phase at the time. My girlfriend at the time was too. I'm talking, we were wearing, both wearing the Jinko pants that you could fit all three of us in at this point. Like, we were wearing those, the black band shirts. My hair was probably neon pink or turquoise or some crazy color at the time. And so now the cops are all bringing us to school. <laughs> uh from what I recall, my, my mom and dad were not happy about that. I'm sure she'll let me know when she listens to this episode. She might have a better memory than, than I do, but they were they were not happy. Because they already had to find a way to replace my car that I had overheated, and then like very shortly after I had to we had to replace the family minivan. <laughs> Bob Saget. <laughs> so the the first accident I was ever even a part of we were in driver's ed in school and we go to the courthouse and park and uh we swap drivers and we were going to do the uh the driving course practice it you know so we're all getting ready to get our license and everything well the guy that was driving goes to back out and just run i mean backs right into a cadillac <laughs> so i 
I, I think it's safe to say he didn't pass that. I think he made an F that semester in driver's <laughs> ed. He wrecked the driver's <laughs> ed car. Nice. But I was sitting in there with him when it happened. But uh, the next one I got, I was a part of, was uh, I was driving my dad's truck to college. And um, I was having a lot of car trouble at the time. So I was having to drive my dad's truck some. And I mean, this is like the first time I got, I think this might've been the first night I drove it to college and I turn onto the road that, that where uh, a and was at and there's a brand new Corvette in the left lane beside me. I'm in the right lane and some douchebag coming from the other direction does a U-turn and, I, and is going to hit the Camaro. I mean, Corvette and the Corvette. So he gets over into me to try to get out of the way. That guy hits him and he hit, and then the Corvette hits me. So me and the Corvette pull into the gas station <laughs> and that guy just keeps going. And um, so the guy gets out of the car and he's like, I mean, he's fucking mad. And he's like, I just got this thing repainted. Ah. And it is fucked up. And it didn't do nothing to the truck. I mean, my dad's his is a big Dodge truck. It didn't do anything to it. I mean, it scratched like the uh, brush guard a little bit, but that was it. it. Didn't do anything. And uh, you know that guy's that guy was so mad. You know, and I, was, and I'm like, man, that sucks, dude. I think I just left. <laughs> well, he's like, hey, I'll uh, you know, I'll fix your truck. You know, it's not really my fault. And I was like. I think I called my dad, you know, dad's like, no, if there's nothing wrong with it, don't worry about it. Right. So, uh, so that one was my fault. But the first one that I was actually involved in that was bad was when I wrecked my Mustang a few years ago. Um, got off the interstate and there's a car in front of me and I, he was slowing down to, uh, to turn into this uh, restaurant well, it used to be a restaurant, just a big parking lot. Now everybody kind of parking rides. They were going to turn into there. So I, I slowed down and um, they decided to keep going. They didn't turn. Well, then they start to uh, turn again. And I look back and there's, I don't see anybody. So I'm just going to get in the left lane and just kind of go around them. Well, I start getting over and this, uh, there was somebody in my blind spot that mm -hmm. I couldn't see. So then I had to go back and I locked the brakes down and just goosh, hit right into the back of them, totaled the Mustang, uh, screwed their car up pretty bad too, and pushed them up on the curb <laughs> at this bank. <laughs> and then I, I turned and I was dragging shit on the road, <laughs> trying to turn down into this mm -hmm. bank parking lot. I was so mad, man. Well, I, I thought the worst. And that and that still makes me mad when people ride in your blind spot. Like it freak like I get PTSD, I get anxiety when somebody won't move out of my blind spot. Yeah. So I will just, I will either just haul ass and get away from that person. Right. I'll slow down and let them just go, go, get the hell away from me. Me too. Me and too. I try not and I try to be cognizant and I don't ride in people's blind spot. That's just not cool. If you if you're there, you either need to be passing somebody or they're passing you. There's no reason to drive right in somebody's blind spot. Look, I I used to be the same way. Luckily, they're adding on the newer vehicles. Uh, I'm sure y'all have noticed it. My car actually has it uh, on the rear view mirrors. If there's somebody anywhere near what your car even considers a blind spot, I get a little light notification on my rear view mirror. Like it, it like it pumps up so that I know somebody's there. And if I even like put on my blinker, like I'm going to change lanes, it starts yelling at me. Beep, beep, beep. Like, so, Hey motherfucker, there's somebody over here. Look, um, yeah, my, parents, my parents van has that. Yeah. That's pretty nice actually. Yeah. It, it, it helps, especially the way people drive in and around Birmingham. All right. Cody. Why don't you tell us when the appropriate time to fart is? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. So the reason I brought this up is I'm when I go when I go when I go pee, like 
at any point, whether I'm at home or I'm out, you know, in a store or whatever, and I go to the bathroom, I'm going to fart while I'm peeing. I mean, that's just part of it. And it seems awkward at times, even though we're in the bathroom, to just be <laughs> popping them off at the urinal and there's somebody sitting, you know, standing right beside you peeing. Like, I'm always thinking, I wonder what they're thinking. Are they thinking, <laughs> this fucking guy, he needs to go in a damn stall if he's got a fart. <laughs> or is it, or is it like fair game? Because to me, it's fair game. And once you get in the bathroom, let her fly, man. It's okay, it's yeah. Crazy. Like, I'll tell you this, like, as soon as I get, for me, as soon as you cross to that threshold door, like, I'll lift a leg up and, <laughs> and let it rip as soon as I walk through the door. I mean, I, if you are if you are behind a door that has the men's room restroom symbol on it, hey, man, let it rip. Doesn't matter where you are. You can be sitting there washing your hands. Just <laughs> It's cool. It's cool. I mean, I'll tell you this, though. I am the world's worst at, like, crop dusting public areas oh me like no i kid you not so it's like we we went to stone mountain a few years back and they had that museum portion of the of the um park and the museum portion had a lot of like little cubby where you walk into the wall there's some paintings and some artifacts and then you just turn right back out so it's like a little cubby oh man i went in there and let one rip that that somebody probably the next person that walked in i would not have been surprised if they would have been looking for a rat on the floor. Like, <laughs> what the hell is that? Like, that smells horrible. And I packed it into a little cubby. It wasn't even free space. It was just, oh no, you walking in here, I probably cropped us at 30 people at the same time with that one little cubby fart. It was the worst. But like, <laughs> I don't know. Sales, if, if you don't see anybody around and you fart in, in the store, here comes a damn truckload of people down the aisle. <laughs> well, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, well, it's just me and my wife and like two other people. I, let me go ahead and let this rip because I'm the last one in the group. And as soon as I turn that corner, I turn my head and like three people walk in. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have get it. This is just too good. I hate when you get those that you just can't stop and they're like the, the sharp. <laughs> Uh, the machine pop. gun, the machine gun farts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the other day, I was I was walking to Walmart, obviously, and uh, one hit me, and I could not stop it. And it, I, I I clenched my butt cheeks, and it just rolled up the cheek, and just popped up the top. <laughs> Look, you and there were people everywhere. And I just played it off like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the hell? Look, you got to be careful doing that shit in Bass Pro Shop. They'll be thinking you're still in duck calls and stink bait. <laughs> <laughs> my Sorry. favorite Larry the Cable Guy, one of my favorite skits of his, is when he's like, you can be in the middle of a desert, ain't seen anybody in three days. You let out a fart, here comes a damn marching band. <laughs> Coming through, he's like, who farted? He's like, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> look at least like y'all are at walmart at least y'all try to make it to the bathroom if i if i know it's safe to trust that fart i, I just keep pushing the buggy down the aisle <laughs> it's gonna fly i mean i just oh no i do too i just mean, you know, it's just like i might not even have to fart but if i go if i go piss in the urinal i'm gonna it's gonna be machine gun Kelly in there. Well, look, you should never get embarrassed oh. for farting when you pee. You remember, rain sometimes comes with a little thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I, I guess what we're saying is, I mean, the appropriate time to fart is whenever you have to fart. I guess the the better question is would be, when is it not appropriate to fart? I While mean, you're sitting down in a public place to eat. Is pro in my book is it may be a church where everybody's sitting in pews. <laughs> like if you let a stank rip in a pew at church and nobody's going anywhere, somebody's gonna be amen in you out of the out of the place. <laughs> but, but, but you don't know if it's gonna stink until it happens. So I mean it's so we're innocent. And nobody knows. Nobody so, knows any better. So if you're gonna do it, you do it during praise and worship when everybody's singing and clapping and real loud. But I mean you don't wait for that silent moment in the sermon to just rip it. I mean, <laughs> I mean hey, and let hey, hey 
a lot of people don't know this, but Catholic pews are, are sound amplifiers. Oh, yeah, because they're hard. They don't have any padding. There's two big speakers at the end of that pew throwing that sound in every direction. (laughs) Dude, if I was Catholic, there's no way I could be Catholic because y'all are they're they're so up and down the whole the whole time. I'd be farting just nonstop. (laughs) I'd be working it out. Uh, But yeah, in my opinion, it's either in church or at a public restaurant. I think those are probably the only two I can think of that would just be highly inappropriate. Like, because can you can you imagine you sitting down eating lasagna and all of a sudden it's <laughs> because somebody just lets one rip that just is so uh-huh. dank you got to throw up. <laughs> like while I eat is probably my least favorite time. But you know what? I say that, but I'm at home sometimes, and I, my wife will probably want to slap me through the window when it happens. But uh, what? It, I'll toot, and it don't smell good. Well, I mean, it, it, speaking of at home, I mean, it's not always appropriate to fart even in your own house. I mean, if you're having sexy time, and one uh, of y'all is going down on the other one, you don't want that person to fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when that's when the trust comes in. Uh, you gotta I trust like that they're gonna be like, hey, 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 you need to you need to back off a minute. I would like to clarify if that happens, that is called a fart transplant. <laughs> that brings up another good point. So at, at what point in a relationship is it appropriate to to fart in front okay. of the Okay, here's the what, here's what I say. Once you th- third date. Because you don't want to waste time on somebody that's going to be so picky they're going to leave you on over a fart. I, but- I agree with him 100%. I, I'll say it like this, is that, you know, and, and I hate that the standard is different, but for a guy, within the first three dates, as uh, maybe not the very first date, but the second, third date, acceptable, because at that point in time, if she can get through that, like, oh, did you just rip one? <laughs> is she still there? You know you found love, Right. I, I think within the first few, you can you can let it rip tater chip all you want. You need that sense of humor. So what? So what do y'all do if if one farts on the first date with you? The girl farts. I honestly, it I mean, I ain't ashamed about it either. It's like <laughs> it depends. <Sorry. laughs> so, so if uh, if she leans over to me and she's like, "Yo, I just cropped us to those people." That's a sense of humor. I'm in, <laughs> baby. That is awesome. But if we're sitting there eating dinner, and a silent one comes out and it stinks to high hell, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like uh, what's his name, uh, Seth from uh, Step Brothers? <laughs> you know what? I can taste it, and it's not funny anymore. <laughs> or I mean, <laughs> or or I mean, if it's like first date and you you go to the movies and it's one of those really really tense sections of the movies, <laughs> and then she just <laughs> rips ass. I mean, that one. I mean, it doesn't warrant not calling her back, but you want to make sure that was just an accident. <laughs> better question: Is it ever an inappropriate time on a date before you're married for the other type of fart to come? You talking about you talking about a front fart? <laughs> <laughs> what about a queef? Yeah. Yep. Man, there's girls on TikTok getting popular off that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> they can almost queef the alphabet. It's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong, Steven, Steven. You know you're not. You shouldn't even know anything about that until they're married. Never heard it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. The way I look at it. A nice juicy queef is the after sex is a way of telling you you did a good job. She goes to sit up and you hear <laughs> you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the equivalent to like a burp in France? That meal was good. Exactly. Exactly. Her her coochie just enjoyed that meal you stuffed her with. (laughs) (laughs) A 
Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll go. We'll go. I'm ahead. sorry, I brought us down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, we will go ahead and uh, get off of that topic, and we will start our our last topic of the evening. Uh, as usual, we are going to work on getting these down to more digestible episodes. We are pushing a few things to next week. Uh, I'm sure Steven will have a little input on this. Uh, he's noticed some, I'm sure. Uh, me and Cody got to talking about bands that have cult followings. I've got a few. Uh, some that I know about the cult following. Some that I'm probably in the cult and uh i've got i've got a ringer cody that i think my cult band has got you beat uh i am not a fan of this band but they definitely have a cult following what 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 were you thinking you want me to go first i don't care so uh me and my wife was eating dinner the other night and uh we got somehow somehow or another this band came up. It, it, there wasn't he wasn't playing on the radio or anything, but we got talking about it and I was like, you know, that band, the the people that follow him are like crazy about this person. And then I don't know anybody that thinks, Oh, he's okay. You either they either just love him and they got their shit all over their car, or you don't like him at all. And I'm talking about Dave Matthews. All right, that's exactly I what I was thinking. <laughs> yep. You either see, they either have stickers all over their fucking car that says DMB, or they're like, God, I, I just don't get it. That's me. I don't get it. I don't get it. So he's got some good so, I mean, he's got some songs that are I like. I mean, they're not on my playlist, but when they come on, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that song. But for the most part, mm-mm. I just don't get it. He's a hell of a guitar player. I'll give him that. He's very, what he does is uh, very creative. Uh, it's definitely when you hear him, you know it's him. So he's got that going for him. So musically, I respect him, but his music, I just, I don't get it. I can't, I don't like right. it. I'm not gonna lie. When you went, when you went from like love to hate, talking about how people got crap all over their cars and, and stuff like that, I thought you were about to say Grateful Dead. They they also have a, a cult following, I would say. The dead deadheads, they any Everywhere. any fan base that has their own name has somewhat of a cult following. Did you have so any was, So was Dave Matthews yours, Alan? No, he was he was a he was a consideration, but he is not on my list. I've got a few. You want me to go with some of mine? Yeah, that was really the only one I had. Okay. I've got a few, and y'all can tell me if you agree. Going back a few episodes ago, we were talking about, uh, another time we were talking about music, and I said that this band, uh, it was when we were talking about underrated bands. And uh, I think the first band I put down as a cult following band is definitely Tool. We talked about them having a dedicated fan base. That's who they write their music for themselves. They're fans. They're not trying to get mass radio play. Tool, I would say, definitely has a cult following. I'm, I'm in that. that. That's a cult I would say I participate in. Uh, the second one, whenever somebody mentions thrash metal, heavy metal, I mean, you, you think of the big four... And one of the most, one of the names you hear the most when you hear the big four is either going to be Metallica or Slayer. I would say that Slayer definitely has a cult following. The other, uh, number three, I, I, I appreciate their music. I'm not a huge fan of all of it, but I do like them as a group. Uh, Wu Tang Clan. I mean, any fan base and the members themselves that will tell you Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. I mean, that they, that they, 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 they that means their fans gonna come get you. You say anything? I'm not saying anything negative about Wu Tang. Don't come after me. I, I appreciate them for what they are. Just not a big fan. Uh, 
I have heard before Wu Tang for life too. Yeah. It was like a saying at one point in time. <laughs> uh, number four is I would say Kiss. I mean, any any once again we go to uh, you have the Kiss Army. Their their fans are called the Kiss Army. I mean, the, you go to a go to a Kiss concert because I mean they had a farewell tour, but we all know Gene Simmons will want more money in four years and they'll do another farewell tour. Um, but. Kiss is on that list. Uh, all the old school, for me, uh, I was doing a little more research into this. All of the old school, old, old school, I'm talking like 80s, uh, possibly even late 70s, old school punk bands. Uh, punk music used to be borderline like with the rap world, uh, East Coast, West Coast thing going on. Uh, and three notable bands that all had very big cult followings were Black Flag, Minor Threat, and The Misfits. All, all big cult following punk bands. But none of them that I've named compare to this band that I'm about to tell you. And both of y'all will instantly recognize that I am right. And I don't care if these weirdos come after me because... They're. <laughs> look, I know who it is already. <laughs> look, these, this band, the people, the two guys that are in the band, I have watched interviews with them, and they seem to be halfway intelligent guys. Like they're funny on their own, but any band that releases like forty-five albums in twenty years, like it's crazy. And of course, <laughs> of course, I'm talking about the insane clown posse. <laughs> I see P, baby. The juggalos. Look, those bitches will fuck you up, man. They're not afraid. They will go to jail for those two. For Shaggy, Two Dope, and Violent J, their fans are not afraid to scrap. They will. I mean, they have their festival, their three-day festival up north is called the Gathering of the Juggalos. I mean, <laughs> that's a cult. I'd have, you know, I'd have to agree with you, and but it also kind of messes up my logic because when I brought this up, it was either you either love them or you don't like them at all. And to, for me, I enjoy some of their music. Some of some of it's entertaining to me, but I can't listen to all of it, and I can't. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I mean, other than the Great Malenko album, that's about the only one I really listen to, front to back. And uh, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and I, and I enjoy it, or I I did then. I, well, I haven't listened to it in fifteen years, probably. So I, I don't know why I feel about it now, but I, I did like it then. But I, I have some, I have some family that are just die hard they have every album could tell you the whole life story do they it's, identify as juggalos yes have they got hatchet man on the back of their car yes see that that's I a cult do. that's a cult <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is a cult following but i do i do like a couple of their songs so some of it some of it's funny no, I agree that a lot of it's funny. And listen, I listen. Y'all heard some of the shit I listen to. Do I think to. it's music? No, it's not music. <laughs> now, look, I admit, their concerts look hella fun. Anybody that goes through 102 liters of Fago <laughs> throwing it all over the crowd, <laughs> that looks like a blast. <laughs> but That beats uh, the spit bucket at uh, Marilyn Manson concerts. But... <laughs> But look, I would much rather jump barefooted into a Slayer mosh pit than go get caught up in the gathering of the Juggalos. I just, I, I would not fit in there. I promise. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather sit in here with my headphones in, with it really quiet, where nobody knows. <laughs> Listen to a couple of their songs. <laughs> you're, a, you're a closet Juggalo, Cody. Oh I like jugs. <laughs> did you have anybody that you could think of that would be considered a, a cult following band Stephen? 
I mean, I, I did bring up Grateful Dead. I mean, that's really right. the only thing I can think of. I, since I was in middle school, those Skull and and uh, what uh, was it? Um, those teddy bears were all over the place. Like those stickers, those logos, the back of cars, people's backpacks. You know, they were everywhere. And, and, you know, there were other people that, that people listen to all different kinds of music, but the, the Grateful Dead was the one thing that it was, the, it was the popular kids in school. It was the unpopular kids in school. It was, you know, people that, that were, you were pretty sure going to shoot up the school. All them <laughs> kids listened to, <laughs> listen to it, you know? And it, it, was, it was so weird because, you know, especially in high school, we have such a big gap of like, okay, well, the popular kids are mostly jocks. And then the unpopular kids are mostly like, they like comic books and crap. I like comic books and crap. Anyways, so, you know, you, you saw that. But that was the one logo growing up that you couldn't avoid that no matter who you hung out with. Like the potheads had it. The popular kids had it. The, some of the nerds had it. Like that thing was everywhere. Right. So. All right. Well. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Did y'all have anything else y'all wanted to uh, shout out real quick before we before we wrap it up? No, nope, just leave in the comments your uh, your bands with a cult following. Uh, when is it appropriate to fart? Or not? Or not? When, or not should, when should you hold the fart in? Or fart or not to fart? That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the first thing we talked about? Uh, oh, what is your uh, yeah favorite cartoons? Yeah, told us already. What's your favorite cartoons? Yep. Did we miss any? Uh, what do you think about our our uh, Mind and Allen's movies and Stevens music? Best hit songs <laughs> of all time. All right. <clears throat> and I will say hey, this: yeah. give me a little bit of credit. I did not have a single Guns and Roses song on my list. That was tough to do too. I know it was. <laughs> Whatever, Cody. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm just, I'm just aggravating you. Yeah. you know, I, that's the beautiful thing about music, and that's the reason I can't give it up. Is that there's so much, there's so many different kinds that everybody has their own thing that they like, and and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. That's what that's why music is so beautiful. It's that old time of rock and roll. That music just soothes the soul. Exactly. There's who sings that. Letter... Look, Bob Seger. And, That's what I said. And look, like, like Cody said, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bands in this world. So you have absolutely zero reason to listen to Guns N' Roses. <laughs> right. Listen to Eagles instead. <laughs> All right. Before we get out of here. Uh, if you are new to our podcast, if you came to us from the Hot Ones episode uh, and you made it this far in, we thank you. We hope we didn't scare you off. We hope you stick around. Everybody keep sharing, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that YouTuber shit. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, just a reminder again, if you want to listen to us on the go, you can hit up the... Uh, the description down below the video, we have links to all major audio platforms for you to listen on. We thank you for joining us this week. We'll see you again next week. Peace out, Peace guys. Peace out. See ya.